Hello everyone, this is Ishan Shah and welcome to Z Interactive and today I'm going to tell you what's new in Adobe Substance 3D Painter 7.3. So there are a couple of new features that have been introduced inside Adobe Substance 3D Painter 7.3. So let's go ahead without further ado. So here I have this 3D Substance Painter mascot that is quite common and all subs uh, substance painter and here you can see now my assets are here my texture list is here my, my layers are here the texture set settings are here properties paint is here so there are a couple of little changes inside the new you can say the workspace actually it's the same thing it's just like reordering of it now here i have the layer and i can easily turn on my you can say uh 2d view 3d view both of the views but let's work on a 3d view for now okay so i can have more space here so now i'll create a new fill layer and i'll change the color of this fill layer to something else like greenish okay now let's do one thing let's go to this texture maps over here let's close this and i'll drag this stars on top of my uh, like a uh, mascot's head as soon as i will do that it will give me this new option here now here it's asking me do you want it to place as as a mask or base color or height or metallic or normal or roughness so i'll say it is a mask as soon as i will click it i will have a mask here and if you will notice the mask have some new option on the top here there is edit warp as a whole and it's a setting Apart from that, we have here moving tool, rotation tool, and scaling tool. The shortcut is same as in any other software. Like if I want to move it, I can move it by pressing W and I can move it wherever I want. I can rotate it with the E, okay? Or I can scale it with the R. So let's scale it a bit here. So once I will scale it, you will notice that I'm not getting any kind of depth over here so what i can do i can just press w on my keyboard and move it back and forth and you can see that i am getting a bit of a depth over here more what i can do here is that if i will go to my properties of the fill you can see that my fabric star is selected if i will go over here and but go up here i will see that you will see that there is a projection depth over here now this projection depth if i will increase or decrease you can see there are some arrows over here now what are these arrows these arrows are from this new edit warp as a whole tool and if you increase or decrease it is increasing and decreasing the projection depth of my mask that i have selected and if i will move it you can see that there is a lot of depth over here in some cases you can fix it right away with the depth okay but in some cases you want to do it by your own and how do you do that you do it with this new option and here in the warp tool okay the edit warp as a whole tool we have edit vertices as soon as you will click on it you will see there are tiny or uh, you can say uh control points over here so you can select off any one of these you can move them with the moving tool and you can see you can warp around the way you want it okay it can be easily warped again can be moved it can go anywhere you want it so this is how it actually work and move this outwards and also here here the way you want it the way you want it to actually reshape you can do with this tool now one more thing here we have is suppose we have only one two three four five six seven eight and nine control points now if you want to increase the control points how you can increase them to increase if you will go here you have split warp horizontal what it do is that as soon as i will click on it it will allow me to add horizontal split and wherever i will split it it will give me a 
control point on that site, like three control points, not one, but three control points, one, two, three, basically, because vertically I have this. Now here, if I will go back, okay, oops, I click on it. Okay. And I will go to the vertically, uh, like split warp vertically. I can split it vertically as well. Now here you can see I have this now at this point. Another way I can do is if I will go back here, I have warp, split warp cross wire. So if I will select this one, I can make a plus horizontal vertical all together at any point. So this is how if you want to add more details in case you are not satisfied with the current number of uh, control points, you can keep on adding the control points. Let's undo that. Okay. And for a, like a, to just, I want to show you one more thing. If you don't want to add these control points through the splitting, you can go to the settings and you can increase the number of rows. Okay. And columns all together because it is locked. It is actually synced together. If I want to unlock it, I just have to click on it and I can go separate rows like suppose I don't I only want two rows and I want more columns so this is way you can also keep on adjusting it if you don't like the color of the grid maybe I don't like the gray I like maybe white grid because I my screen is a little darker I want to see more of visible grid so I can make it white or even if you want if you are a little bit uh more more into colors you can change the colors if it is too small for you, you can make it medium or you can make it larger. So it's totally up to you how you want to set it up. So that's a one cool thing that I like about this new warp tool over here. And this is an amazing tool transform warp tool here. And there are a few shortcuts to access this, which you can find on uh, in the link given in the description below from the Adobe website. There are a couple of very useful shortcuts you can see there so that you can work more faster. So let's move on. Now I have this simple model of a soda can here. Now one more way that we can add the warping here is with the new cylindrical projection. Okay, so let's see how it works. Now here I have imported a um, map here. Let's see where it is. Let's let's see if it is already imported or not. Okay, it's not. So let's let's go here and then import it. Okay, here it is, and I will import it this as a. Oh, uh, maybe texture. Okay. Here I, here you got it. Now what I will do simply, I will just drag and drop here. Okay. And I will call this as a, maybe a, a diffuse. Okay. And now I have the diffuse. Now one more thing here, if you will notice, once you will drag and drop it here, you have the warp projection. Now in the warp projection, we have like a UV warp, so there are different type of UV warp, or, uh, repeat horizontal, repeat vertical, repeat, and like horizontal, vertical all together. So I will choose a repeat horizontal here. And what I will do is that I will now choose instead of a warp projection, I can use cylindrical projection. So as soon as I will do that, I will have the cylindrical projection here. Okay. Now I want it to be in the center. And in the center, once it is gone, you can see that it is like projecting it from the center of this cylinder. Okay. So it's more like a cylindrical projection here. So I can take my scaling tool here. Okay. And just move it down here. So now I have this uh, like uh, activated my cylindrical projection here. Okay, repeat horizontal, 
and I have here angle. I can change the hang angles. I like the way I want it. This is 360 degrees angle all, all the way there. Okay. And then I have scaling of this. I can increase or decrease. And you can see if I do that, I will have a different sort of a projection here. Let's not do negative. Let's do positive. Okay. So I can, so you can see that I have horizontally repeating projection here. Let's scale this a little bit up here. So it doesn't look that bad. So easily you can do the cylindrical projection here now. Okay. And if I, if you don't want only horizontal, if you want uh, like all together, like a vertical horizontal also, just you can press repeat and you can get everything over here just like this. And you can change the angle you want. Like just notice here on the uh, top of the UV, how it goes. Okay and like 360 or the way you want you can do the offset here okay and you can move around you can do rotation and you can do so many things like offset y or offset x is totally up to you okay and then in the here down you have some other options that i don't want to play with but this is how you get your 3d projection with the cylindrical uh, method Okay, so this is how it will work. So you have other options as over here. And there are more shortcuts to this. You can also check out those on the like link uh, like given in the description below. Also, you can uncheck the scaling mode. Okay, so this is totally up to you how you want to do that. Okay, so usually I keep it open. So it's totally up to you. And let's see what do we have more over here inside the new Subsys Painter 7.3. Now, as we spoke about the projection depth over here, so let's do one experiment and let's see how it helps us, uh, help us if we are using assets here. So suppose I have these different assets here. And if I will use this and drag a drop on the body of this uh, mascot, will ask me how or like how do you want it i'll say okay i want it as a height map i'll choose that press w to move it down and if i will move it down you can see i'm not able to see it the reason is that because the projection depth is not working the way i want it so it have to be a little bit a back touching the body of it also rotate it so i can actually it fits there okay now it do fit on most of the part, but here you can see something is missing. Now here where the projection depth comes along. So if I will increase the projection depth, it will allow me to get the, proje the, the projection as far as I can. Okay. And here you can move it back and forth just to see around how you, how you can do it. Okay. So that's one thing that you can do with the projection map. And with this new asset using tool, like uh, you can now easily drag and drop the assets and the way you want to convert it into a mask or a diffuse or even a hide map, it's quite easy and faster now. Now, one more other thing which I really like about this is the new like color picker tool. Let's let's delete this screw cross around here and let's click on this add fill layer. Okay. Now as soon I will click on this add fill layer, it will ask me what kind of uh, color you want or anything. So I'll choose the base color here. But before doing that, let me open a palette website so we can use that. Now, in the older version, let's go back to the 3D only. In the older version, I, or you were supposed to only get the base color, okay, from this window, or you can just click here and then take the color from your, within the app. But now what you can do is that, suppose you don't like any color that is here and you like some color that you found, that you found on, uh, and any other website out of Subsys Painter, like some somewhere from this, like like colors.co, like the coolers.co. So if I will try take this eyedropper, I can simply drag 
and go outside my substance painter and choose any color outside the substance painter so this is quite a really good way of choosing any color from anywhere it's quite handy and i like the way it has been incorporated in this new version so i i, I really like this part and it's something really good and then it helps you a lot it's it's kind of makes you work a little bit more faster now talking about let's go back to our warp tool and let's see where it works most right now now i have this 3d let's go to 3d only head over here and i want to bring this head texture map on it okay once it is uh i, I will drag and drop on this like a head model it will ask me what uh, how do i want it so i'll i want it as a diffuse as soon as i have it this as a diffuse i can simply start working on it like i can increase the size of it okay the way i want it and then i can rotate move around Okay, and then I can increase the depth of it so it can go a little bit back there. And simply, once you have this one, what you can simply do is that you can start working on projecting it easily. Okay, just you take the edit vertices, move around, okay, add more vertices and keep on adding keep on moving around until you find the best results that suits your work okay but this is quite a good way of doing this it helps you a lot and this is one thing that i really like this uh, about this one like so for example if i go over here let's undo this what have done before if i go here and let's add more and then I have this option here. So I can move around the way I want it, wherever I want this eye to be. I can move it that that way. If the projection is too deeper, I can reduce the projection the way it is there. So this is where it actually really work very easily there obviously it takes time okay and then you can project more uh maps on different kind of surfaces and when you're satisfied you will get the result that you're looking for so usually it takes time uh it will take a little time over here plus this model over here is kind of a low poly model and it's not correctly baked so i don't i i do have some initial stuff to do before doing this okay and then you can add more uh like kind of a uh the points over here suppose i just want one point here so i can easily fix the lips or those kind of things so i hope you like this new version of this adobe substance 3d painter 7.3 and let me know in the comment section below that uh, did you find it useful and will you enjoy it more and will you able to work on it more and more and more so please let me know about this and keep watching z interactive subscribe to my channel follow my channel i want as many subscribers as i want so that i can keep on making new videos and like my video if you find it very useful okay guys thanks a lot and thanks for being part of z interactive and watching my videos